Welcome to the e-cave. In this episode, I'll continue my adventure in restoring the TRS-80 Model 1. In the last episode, I tackled the power supply, but this time it's time to look at the monitor. So, if you're interested in that, stay with me. Well, thanks for staying. Uh, in the last episode, as you may have already seen, but if not, I'll link to it. I tackled the TRS-80 power supply. Now, as you can see, this is a fairly bulky one. This is the Australian version, 240 volt, 50 hertz. I took it apart, measured the output and load tested it as well and used a thermal imaging camera just to double check it wasn't overheating. I've now done a bit of cleaning so it's shining a bit. So I think that's ready for action. But next we've got to get the monitor up and running. So let's tackle that one. Well, I've cleared the deck, so to speak. I've taken the system unit away and the cassette and the power supply. And all we have here is the monitor. Now, as I said in the first episode, it's a 110 volt monitor, 60 hertz. Luckily for us, <laughs> I've got one of these. This is a step down transformer, so I should be able to power it up using that. Now, one of the things that I was worrying about when I got this is the fact that uh, aside from 110 volt 60 hertz uh, it might be NTSC versus PAL but from what I can read everywhere the TRS-80 only output NTSC so uh, whether they sold it in uh, Australia, UK or Europe, I gather it always output NTSC. So hopefully that's the case. We'll find out when we get to the system unit. But let's look at this one. Uh, it's, it's a bit uh, unclean and has suffered some scratches and stuff. Uh, it ha does have uh, the original cable attached to it, thankfully. But apart from that, it looks to be okay. Uh, I can't see anything major happening. Uh, and of course, <laughs> it has the 110 power cable here. So we'll just have to see what we can do now. The first thing to do is to actually take the back off and have a look inside to make sure there's nothing untoward happening. And to do that, we're going to have to unscrew a few screws. Looks like they're hex screws, so I'll have to get a tool for that. Well, I've got myself a hex screwdriver, so we can take the cover off. First, I'll uh, untangle the power cord so we can get the back off. And that uncovers a couple of adjustments, which is good. Next, we'll take the cover off. So, there's a screw here. There's another one here. This one here. And 
fourth one here. And it looks like this one here as well, so. So now the cover should come off, or at least I hope so. There we are. I'm gonna get the AC cord through. There we are, we can put that away. Interesting. It doesn't look too bad on the inside. Slightly dusty, but apart from that, it doesn't look burnt or anything like that. It seems to be fairly functional. The caps look okay to me. They don't seem to have bulge or anything. The, the high voltage transformer, we can see it here. It's hooked up to the vacuum tube or to the CRT. Now it's just a question of what will happen if we turn it on. It's a uh, strange computer monitor because in reality this is a, originally a TV, an RCA TV that was sold in the US by RCA. You can actually see the holes here for the original tuner and uh, when you look at the lead that connects to the system unit it came out from here, but there used to be a, an adjustment for the TV and this plate was installed in order to uh, block the two holes. So Tandy basically got RCA to uh, slightly modify one of their existing selling TVs and turn it into a computer monitor with minimum effort. They did, however, add this board here. This is the input board and it's isolated uh, from the chassis because this thing is 110 volts directly connected with the uh, unit. One of the leads goes into the ground and uh, the other one simply uh, drops via resistors and rectifies to provide the voltages on the main board. Uh, but they had to isolate it from the TRSA system unit itself, so that's what this board does, provides that isolation with an optocoupler. But Let's see if this turns on and works. So to do that, we have to put it uh, onto a transformer. As I'm not all that familiar with the US AC voltage, I've gone and made sure that I bust out the cable here and I know which side is neutral, which goes into the chassis. So the worst thing you could do is put active uh, into the chassis and that be the last thing you do if you then touch the chassis. But anyway, on the step down transformer, I've also marked it active and neutral. So it should be now safe to put it in here in the right way. So I just wonder if this thing will fire up. Well, we shall see. First, we have to turn the power on for the transformer. And the transformer is on. And now, uh, let's turn this so you'll be able to see the screen, just like me, if something comes on at the front. I've got another camera from that angle. So let's turn this on and hope nothing on toward happens. I can see 
the CRT uh, is glowing. So that's, oh, we have a screen. We do have something here. Excellent. So the thing's working. Well, the next thing I want to do is feed some video into this TV in order to verify that it actually can display anything. So in order to have a video source, I've taken my SLR camera, uh, configured it for NTSC, and it will output uh, video. So I've got that here. Let's pull that. And I've got the video cable from it here. And uh, in order to put video into this, I've uh, soldered another connector. This little thing. So that's a female DIN 5. And I've got the composite video going in here. And we also need to supply 5 volts onto that new board or the isolator board. Now this goes in here. The composite video would go in here. But I need to power it with 5 volts and I'm simply <laughs> using a USB power pack for that. So we can plug that in. And let's turn this so you can see what's happening. All right. So the video's connected, the power's connected. All we have to do is turn on this camera and we should see video here on the screen. So let's try that. Well, so much for that. We're not seeing any video whatsoever. And that's no good. I verified the camera, so I know that's working. Uh, so it looks like some more diagnosis is required. I'll get my oscilloscope and see if we can trace the composite video into the card and then into the opto isolator and see what that happens. So I'll set that up and I'll be back. Now that I have my oscilloscope set up and I'm ready to have a look at some of the points in the circuitry, but before I do that, I thought I'd show you the schematic diagram and what I plan to do so you can follow along what, with what I see and where I see it. So let's pull out the schematic diagram and I'll show you how, how this circuit work and what I'm planning to do. As you see here, I've got the schematic circuit of the video board and I'll go through the flow. First of all, the red line here is the plus 5 volts coming from the TRS-80 system unit because they have to feed this video card 5 volts because of its isolation. The black here is the ground which also comes from the TRS-80. So this ground is isolated from the monitor itself. And then you have the white here which is the composite video coming from the TRS-80. So basically the flow of the circuit is that you get the composite video in here. You can see there's a 75 ohm resistor to provide some termination for the composite video. Then you have uh, a 100 microfarad uh, capacitor which couples the composite video signal onto the base of Q3. 
which does the amplification and drives the optocoupler. Now Q2 here, you can see the base of the Q2 is also hooked into the base of Q3. This here is a noise suppressor. Basically, if you get a huge noise spike, I'm assuming this uh, transistor would uh, uh, open up and then shunt the noise down to ground. There's some amplification happening here, and this is the 6N135 optocoupler, and the collector of Q3 drives a photodiode, which is inside the chip, and uh, the composite video then comes in here, drives the photodiode, and then on the other side there's a phototransistor, receiving the emitted light from this photodiode and that uh, phototransistor is coupled to a base of a transistor which is inside the optocoupler itself and it is configured to provide some amplification. You can see the output of the collector of the uh, transistor inside the optocoupler goes into another transistor called Q1 and this one is also on the video board, but this one is actually powered by the monitor. You can see the power comes in here from the monitor. And so this part of the circuit on this side of the, this side of the optocoupler is basically the monitor side. The Q1 does some amplification and then it's coupled through a 10 microfarad capacitor into Q4. It also provides some amplification and then it goes to Q5 where there's further amplification until it leaves the video board into the monitor itself. Now this video board would have uh, been a tuner board in the original RCA TV monitor. So uh, they've created this circuit to feed the video into the monitor. So I'm planning to uh, put my oscilloscope here on the base of this transistor to see if I'm getting the composite video in behind this capacitor. Then I'll put the oscilloscope here to see if I'm getting anything on this side. So. Uh, Let's do that. Now, before I did all of this, I've done measurements of the voltages. Uh, so I measured the voltages uh, in the monitor and on the video card. And uh, they're all pretty close to what they should be. So uh, I'm pretty confident that all the voltages are fine. And you can also see that uh, the monitor fires up and you have a, a screen output but there doesn't seem to be any video so let's put the scope on this and see what happens well now that I've explained the circuit to you and what I'm going to check for uh, I'll proceed to do that now the first thing I need to do is to uh, turn on the camera but before I measure anything, I'll tell you uh, the monitor is turned off. The reason for that is there are some lethal voltages there and I just don't want to stick my hands in there without uh, having it off because I really don't have to. Uh, the circuit, uh, the video input circuit is energized by external 5 volts, so I don't need to uh, have the monitor turned on until I'm testing the video on the other side of the optocoupler. But, uh, as I mentioned, first we'll measure the composite video on the collector of Q2 to verify that we get the composite video through capacitor C1. So, turn on the camera. And then we'll measure on the collector of Q2. And voila, we do have composite video on the collector of Q2. 
as you can see on the oscilloscope. Next, we should have uh, a slightly amplified uh, signal on the collector of Q3. So if you go to Q3, the collector, uh, we have nothing, almost nothing. So there's something wrong with Q3. Now, it could be the optocoupler or it could be the transistor. So that's something we have to check out. I'll take out this board and we'll have a look at it. Uh, take out the transistor and check that. And if that checks out okay, I'd have to go and source another opto isolator. So let's check the transistor first. As you can see, I've taken out the board and I'm going to take out the two transistors. They're the same transistor as you saw on the schematic diagram. And I'll test them both. Uh, and I can even swap them, but let's take them out first. So I have to desolder them. When they were originally installed, they folded the legs down onto the board, which makes it a bit harder to get them out, especially if you're desoldering like this. But we'll get there. Okay, Q3 is out. And now we need to get Q2. And Q2 is out. So we have two of them here. Q2 and Q3. So let's test them on a transistor tester, which I should have here. All right. Should have gotten that already, but that's the way it goes. So we'll connect Q2 up first. Let's see what it says. This is a tester that doesn't care which leg goes where, it finds out automatically. Pretty nifty little things. All right, and we put it on. Okay, it seems to be happy. This is an NPN silicon transistor. It's got a current gain of 270. Test current is 2.5 milliamp base to emitter voltage is 0.8. So looking good. Let's try Q3, which would be more likely to be non-functional. Okay, I've hooked that up. So let's do that test again. Yeah, it reckons it's fine. The gain is about 264, the other one 270. So both of them measure fine. All right. Both transistors are good. There's only one thing left, which is that opto isolator chip, which is this thing here. It's a 6N135. It only has one transmitting diode on the, on the input side and then uh, a phototransistor on the receiver side. And that part of the circuit is powered via the monitor. This one is powered via the TRS-80. Unfortunately, I don't have one of these in stock, so I have to get one. And then we'll see what whether we get any further or not. So let's use a bit of time warp and uh, I'll show you when I get the part. I'm back. It's been about a week and a half and I have now received my optocoupler. 
But before I proceed to replace it on the video card, I thought I'll put it up on a breadboard and see what the circuit behaves like. I, because it's a simple circuit, I'm basically using a couple of BC47B NPN transistors and discrete components as required. I've also replaced my DSLR with a El Cheapo Vivita camera, which outputs NTSC as well. So the, the good thing about that, it's always on. The DSLR would always time out. So let's look at this breadboard and see what we can probe. First, I've got the input here, video composite input here into a 100 microfarad capacitor and then we have two two behind that behind those connectors and then we have uh, q3 further along the chain and the optocoupler is here then you see the various resistors and there's a decoupling capacitor on the 5 volt i'm using 5 volts from the same usb power pack as before so everything's the same so let's probe this circuit. So first I'm probing the input, i.e. the output from the Vivita camera, which should be NTSC. And as you can see, I'm getting composite video signal, which is almost about two volt peak to peak, two and a half volt peak to peak, which is fine. And then when we probe on the transistor Q3 on the output coming into the optocoupler, which is this wide circuit, wide lead here, we see next to nothing. But if you do increase the sensitivity, you can see there is signal there. So we are getting signal there. And perhaps that's what I should have done when I was propping this earlier. It's a very low level signal. It's probably what, two, four, six, six, seven hundred milliwatt. So maybe that is enough to transmit across. Now once I had a look at that, I decided to feed video into the monitor and I actually fed it into Q1, which is on the other side. Now I won't show you all the things I set up to do that, but uh, because it's live and I don't want to be probing while videoing into a high risk circuit. But I can show you what I saw when I put video into Q1, which is the first transistor on the other side of the optocoupler. As you can see, I've hooked up to the base of Q1 and this signal is the composite signal from my DSLR using a uh, capacitor. I then turn on my camera and let's see if something comes on the front screen. Voila, we have a reasonably contrasty video, although it's not syncing very well, but that tells me the video circuit after the optocoupler seems to be working fine. So I decided to feed the DSLR back into the input of the video circuit and see what happens. Maybe I got it wrong. Here's my DSLR hooked into the TRS-80 video input. You can barely see the video there. If I turn down the lights and take a photo, you can see it more clearly. So the circuit seems to be working. As you've seen with the two videos I've shown you and photos of the video that comes onto the monitor, there is video coming through. 
is very dim. And I didn't realize it when I was looking at the monitor. I've got bright lights here while I'm doing video recording. But if I turn it all the way down, as you can see, you can see faint uh, image. Now, I think that simply means the monitor is fine. And what I'll do, I'll, uh, in the next episode, tackle the TRS-80 system unit. And then we'll really find out if we get any video on the monitor. If it is dim, I might have to do some adjustments or uh, look at some of the capacitors in the circuit to see if they've dried up. But until then, thanks for stopping at the e-cave. <laughs>